Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, about 11.02 p.m. California time. October 9th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 3.1 earthquake here in the red flag down around the New Zealand area. Also 2.3 into the Alaska region. Got a little bit of swarming going on up here in northern Alaska. And in general, elevated activity out here across the northern edge of the Pacific plate along with the uh, plate boundary here of the uh, North American plate. So a lot going on out here, uh, increasing movement over the last week. As you can see here, a lot of uptick in earthquake activity, except for this region right over here. And that's a little concerning because we looked at historical data here and there's not a lot of big earthquake activity. Um, obviously we have seen some, but uh, it's been more across this area where the slip rate is a little bit higher. Uh, but something to watch here. Maybe looking at some larger scale movement about ready to take place here across this plate boundary. Uh, stretching all the way up north here around Denali as well. Got a swarm of activity even up into the Brooks Range here. Well north uh, out there across the, uh, the tundra area. Way up there. Uh, a bunch of twos and threes out here in the last 24 hours. And if we look at the last seven days, we got about 37 earthquakes here of various magnitudes. And really... No main quake uh, to start this swarm off. It's just a various amount of earthquake activity. And I went back and looked at historical data out here. Um, this area of interest sits right about here, but just north we've seen a lot of larger scale activity here. Uh, back in 2018, a couple sixes back here kicked up. And uh, this, you know, this area definitely can see some earthquake activity. Um, 5.3 back in 2019. A couple other smaller quakes out here as well. So just kind of watching it. It's been elevated out here. Whenever we see some type of earthquake swarm going on here, it's obviously uh, a reason for a reason, right? And along with the general elevated activity out here across the Aleutian Trench stretching up this way, we got to be on guard for some potential large-scale movement out here across Alaska. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. One earthquake today out in the Gorda Ridges. This is a separation uh, of the oceanic crust. We've got ridges here due to that separation. Nothing new to report here across Northern California. Let's check out the trimmer map here tonight. See what we have for the Cascadia trimmer, which consists of zero epicenters. Nothing going on there across the Cascadia for now. So a little interesting. Uh, Northern California earthquake activity, minimal at best. A little bit of movement here across the uh, Colinga area and Avenal with a 2.4 coming in in the last hour. This is the area that had uh, a little bit of swarming here in the last week. Uh, another 2.4 back in the third of this month here with a handful of smaller quakes. So things are starting to fill in here at various areas around Southern California. So just be on guard. Death Valley area, uh, Bakersfield, a little bit out here across the... Um, Oh, this little fault system right here. Uh, not much going on across Malibu, Los Angeles area. Uh, a couple smaller quakes here throughout the day. Uh, a little swarming going on here across the San Jacinto fault zone. But uh, overall, you know, no major earthquake activity as of yet. Uh, we, had, we had a little decent swarming down here south of the border earlier this morning. A cluster of quakes. Since then, though, it's halted. I'm watching this area here uh, across the area of Southern California, the Brawley Seismic Zone. We have not seen any uh, swarming activity in quite a while. And with all the elevated activity out here in Southern California, given the last couple months, uh, I'm really surprised we haven't seen any swarming. So I'm watching that closely here uh, across Yellowstone National Park. Nothing showing up here. Well, maybe a couple smaller earthquakes. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview uh, real quick and see what's going on then we'll get to uh, space weather activity because things are ramping up here pretty uh, significantly there's a couple of those smaller quakes here in the last uh, few hours or so nothing big those are generally very small earthquakes and in fact those earthquakes here in the last couple hours have not been reported here by the usgs these two earthquakes are from way earlier this morning uh, fairly quiet across the oil fields for now only a uh, handful of them it looks like nothing big as far as worldwide activity goes uh let's check hawaii here real quick uh, a little swarm going on out offshore towards the loihi seamount 
nothing major for now. A couple smaller quakes out here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate from, uh, well, throughout the morning and afternoon here, a little sequence of them, some fours. Trail of earthquakes here across the Java Trench. One of the newer quakes out here across the southwestern Indian Ridge with a 5.1 earthquake. And uh, down here across New Zealand, still getting uh, a little bit of uptick here with some threes out here across the plate boundary, South Island area, and just north here of the uh, North Island around the Kermadec Trench. Quite a bit of uptick going on. If you notice here, we've added the Earthquake 3D Globe back with the EMSC data. Got the servers updated, so it looks a lot better. We like to be able to see what's going on along the world here. Now, if, if I were to add every single agency out here, you would see all the plate boundaries out here with a lot of twos uh, and some ones and maybe some threes out here as well. So this is only a fraction of the earthquakes that take place in any single day. But uh, we don't want to make it look, you know, all chaotic like that. Imagine more earthquakes out here on the globe. It would be almost impossible to uh, figure out what's going on in terms of specifics, you know, looking at a detailed area. So don't want to uh, over clutter that globe out there. But uh, it's a pretty decent, decent amount of earthquake activity out here in the last 24 hours. All right. So let's go ahead and check out space weather activity because we have a treat in store here look at the proton event goodness we are kicking up here with bombardment of protons here from the uh, recent x flare activity just slamming the ionosphere this is affecting the polar regions here this is not the auroras this is uh, uh the proton bombardment now the aurora forecast here we got a treat definitely got a, a significant treat i feel here coming up uh, now, this here says tonight's forecast, but this is for um, this is going to be for Thursday night. It's still technically Wednesday night here in California, but this is going to be for Thursday night and for Friday night. You get outside because we're going to have a decent chance here. This view line could be well down here in the northern California, Oklahoma area, uh, Kentucky region south here. Uh, and that's for KP index of seven or eight. Uh, they're calling for way up there. Look at that. Consistent 8 KP index up there. That's a G4 class storm. Now, if things are set up properly, say if we got the BZ component there of the interplanetary magnetic field, that will allow for some further escalation of that uh, KP index of 8. That could, We could go 9 and full blast like we seen back in May. Uh, where we had auroras down Southern California, some down in Mexico, Florida, Texas, uh, you know. So this is a uh, a decent chance to uh, see the auroras if you happen to miss out on May's uh, this earlier this year May solar storm activity. It's uh, very possible we could see some extremely low uh, latitude auroras from this event. So we'll watch for that. G4 storm and conditions here expected for Thursday night and Friday night. The moon about half full out there. Just seen it set out there on the western sky here in Northern California. Auroras right now, not you know, not too much going on here. So we're expecting that to kick up here tomorrow. So uh, Thursday. I know it's tomorrow for a lot of folks out there. 11-11 right now. All right, make a wish. Uh, a couple more. Well, we had one more near X flare here. Uh, within the last few hours let's go back here the last uh, three days here and um you know we've seen a number of x flares out here recently goodness so we're, we're getting a lot of a lot of space weather activity here the elevated threat here for x flare activity continues with a 40 percent chance there of x flare activity uh, M flare at 75, C flare at 99. So we got all this bombardment of protons, right? And then we got a major solar storm coming in. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here uh, uh, in terms of earthquake activity, right? We've been kind of keeping track of what happens to the earthquakes here. Do they get elevated? Do they stay consistent? Do they decline when a solar storm arrives? So we are bombarded with protons. Big time storm coming in tomorrow. Let's keep an eye on the earthquake activity. As far as major flare threats out here, well, as I said, 40% chance there, and we have a number of sunspots out here that are uh, fairly complex. 3848, uh, beta gamma delta structure. 
So 38, 48 out here. It's going to be this massive sunspot area. Let's bring up the la latest imagery. Uh, a little bit of complexity, complexity going on here within that core. Um, that's the one that produced the most recent large X flare that uh, is was earth directed here a couple days ago, and is going to be the culprit for the G4 storming conditions here uh, coming up for Thursday and Friday night. So that was a little bit more in the position, but it was earth directed. It was completely earth directed. I I would be surprised if it missed us in terms of the CME. Then I would start questioning other things. What's going on out here? Because this was earth directed. It was a full halo CME. There's no way that that thing would miss us if you look at the um power company thing here let's check this out okay so let's put this into motion and the x flare this g4 storming conditions here's the sun watch right here you're going to see a huge blast off of that x flare large cme activity slamming into planet green, uh, the green here earth and uh, we should get a full blast here of some high plasma density along with elevated speed conditions. And uh, I, I think it'll be a dandy of a storm here tomorrow, folks. I'm going to be out taking some pictures there after dark here in Northern California. I can't pass up on it. This is uh, going to be a good one. Hopefully everything uh, plays out as it should. All right, uh, hurricane activity. I, I know a lot of folks out there watching the storm chasers out there in Florida with uh, Hurricane Milton. It's getting uh, degraded. It looks like 105 mile per hour sustained winds here. Let me bring this up. Or no, excuse me, 90 as the latest update here. So uh, or did, we're drifting down there into the category one class. This is 2 a.m. So this is a fairly recent update. Moving off to the east northeast at about 16 miles per hour. The, the only good thing I could say about this, folks, and uh, I think a lot of us can agree here, is that it was not a Category 4 or Category 5 upon landfall. It was actually Category 3, a low-grade Category 3, as they originally forecasted. So that was a decent call, but a lot of folks were calling for a 4 or 5, and even myself, I thought that this thing was going to hold steady, but uh, things played out. Uh, it's still Category 3 is a... Uh, you know, fairly powerful hurricane, but it couldn't, you know, it could have been worse. So that will continue to drift uh, across the state of Florida as a hurricane and then a tropical storm and depression as it uh, heads out towards the Atlantic. So let's see what we got here as of the GFS models. There's a uh, Milton heading off. See you later, alligator. Uh, back behind that, uh, I don't, well, there is a tropical system down there spinning around the uh oh that's not good let's hope that doesn't ring true uh, but the models are forecasting mater maybe mater is that even a word mater mater uh another hurricane maybe around the end of uh, october here so i don't know it's a ways out right but i do like to pay attention to these models and as they hint towards uh some tropical system down there towards the end of the month uh, Northern California here, we have a series of storm systems coming in, and I am very thankful uh, for the cooler weather that's about ready to come into California. You know, I would love to have some rainfall, but I will take the cooler weather because 104 degrees, you know, that's July weather, not October. And we've seen that here just a couple days ago. So we have uh, a little bit of cooler weather coming in here. Not a lot, uh, but it's going to be roughly average temperatures. And... Um, Maybe some uh, troughing going on here, middle of October as well for Northern California. High pressure can stay out here across the Northeast. They can have that high pressure. I know those folks don't, oh, I can't say for everyone, but uh, I hear a lot of complaining when it's cold out there. I'll take the cold over the heat. Uh, and then we'll see what happens after that. But I'm not seeing any major dominant high pressure pattern out here across the West Coast. So that makes the Earth Master out here pretty happy. Uh, a lot of folks asking, well, why don't you move? Well, it's moving is a lot harder uh, than just, you know, saying those words here. For one, it takes big time money, right, to move. Also, when you have kids implanted in the school system out here and family, it's kind of hard to move and, you know, just pull them out of the system. Uh, so I got to consider that as well. So a couple earthquakes here to the Kalinga area. We'll watch it. Northern California or uh, Southern California is starting to show some elevated activity out here in a couple different regions. Um, 
in Alaska as well. More so Alaska than I've seen here in Southern California in the last couple days. Big time elevated activity stretching up towards the Nally, even all the way up into the Brooks Range here. You can follow that trail of activity. So watch the subduction zone right here. I wouldn't doubt it here. We see some larger activity out here soon. Um, if you look at the last 30 days here, this is the only area that uh, has not had any adjustment going on here. But we got a lot of adjustment further inland and some deeper activity inland. So watch, definitely watch this area where the strain builds up. We'll see uh, what happens here in the coming days. Just figured I would throw that out there. So mark that. Um, yeah. Anyway, we will catch you guys back out here. A little spike of an earthquake on Parkfield. That's going to be the. Uh, that's going to be that 2.1 coming in there at 2309. So 2309. Yeah, just before the 0610 here. So that would make sense that that's the uh, 2.1 coming in right now. Aside from that, uh, the rest of the seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet, folks. Have yourself a good evening, and we'll see you guys back out here in the morning for the uh, Thursday morning update. Stay safe.